Netball coverage has changed dramatically over the last well, 15 years since I've been involved in the game. We obviously won the Commonwealth Games gold and that catapulted it into everyone's attention. Working at Sky, you know, I've seen the stuff that they do behind the scenes and how they've really wanted to push, push and promote the game. Netball is one of those sports that you're never going to be given a title, you're never going to be a netball producer or you're never going to have a netball reporter or a netball correspondent. We have quite dramatically improved the um, netball coverage. On a data, on a percentage wise, I mean, I think you're probably looking at anywhere from kind of one to two percent of our overall output would be around netball coverage. I cannot believe how athletic the girls are. I cannot believe how quick the game is. So I think if you got more people to watch it, um, they'd appreciate that it's a sport. It's difficult to use the word deserves more coverage because every sport deserves coverage. All you watched on TV were men. It's just changing what people are used to. Get the ratings up and then hammer on the door to say we want more. Um, so does it deserve more coverage? Probably yes, um, but 10, 15 different sports could all argue exactly the same thing. I, I've been really vocal about this, women need to support women. The investment that England Netball have put into the sport in the last five to ten years has increased. Netball's quite a big deal. And the whole attitude towards women's sport is changing. They call this a schoolgirl game. In fact, netball is the largest participation sport for women in the UK. Even with 300,000 people playing this regularly across the country, there is only one semi-professional level, the Vitality Super League. And netballers now want it to receive the spotlight it deserves. Netball coverage has changed dramatically over the last well, 15 years since I've been involved in the game. Um, working at Sky, you know, I've seen the stuff that they do behind the scenes and how they've really wanted to push, push and promote the game. I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg at the moment. We're getting plenty of coverage and we now need people to, to tune into that. We need them to watch it on YouTube, we need to tune in on Monday nights and watch the live stuff, watch the internationals, get the ratings up and then hammer on the door to say we want more. As a retired professional, this England legend is doing everything she can to expand the sport she loves. The whole um, point of netball is it being accessible and, and it's definitely something that's forefront and centre on, on women because the majority of the players and the players playing at the elite level are, are females. At the moment there's this massive disconnect between players playing and stuff that's happening in the elite and I think that's where you get the breakdown of girls not necessarily aspiring to be a netball player when they grow up. Um, but I think by doing this more, getting faces to come out and, and coach them and speak to them and actually getting the coaches involved as well starts to bridge that gap. And the ball hasn't stopped rolling since the first Super League tournament in 2005. When I first started, any coverage we did get was very nicey-nicey and just, you know, a group of people played netball. We're actually doing the ins and outs. I've pushed really hard on the analysis and Sky have been amazing for that. So we're actually talking about the game, how it should be spoken about, players that played well, things that are happening. And that, I think, that serious side of it helps grow the game. But they face one big problem. This is nothing compared with football, which is shown on top review channels. I mean, naturally, Premier League football is kind of a lot of what we do because that's where the biggest interest is. It's also uh, where a lot more access is kind of granted and also it's where kind of it, it, it cuts through with our audience a lot more. On Sky Sports, Super League matches were aired at most of once a week during the last season and it's not any better on other channels. On a percentage wise, I mean, I think you're probably looking at anywhere from kind of one to two percent of our overall output would be around netball coverage. That then increases exponentially during major competitions. So when England squads are announced, when there's particularly newsworthy stories. Currently, Australia produce the most competitive netball coverage and pay. And because of this, top athletes like Joe Harton head down under for success. Until you get the best players in the world, and that includes some of England's players in that as well, playing regularly within our own country, training full time within our setup, and improving the quality and the standard of the domestic output, you're unlikely to see an increase in coverage per se. But when that happens, I think it will organically grow uh, and they'll come, come together. The investment that broadcasters like Sky and the BBC have put into it is slowly increasing as well. But I think what, what you do, you'll only see kind of the benefits of that in five or ten years time. It's not something that's going to happen instantly. Um, so does it deserve more coverage? 
Probably yes, um, but 10, 15 different sports could all argue exactly the same thing. But other leading journalists have more hope. I think we've been really lucky in the last two years that England obviously won the Commonwealth Games gold and that catapulted it into everyone's attention and national newspapers were covering it, the BBC were covering it, we re-ran the final on BBC One or BBC Two that morning and then following on from that they had the World Cup the next year. So it was kind of like this two year golden window where everyone was interested in netball. Super League's hard to cover on a weekly, weekly basis, I think it's good enough, it's better than it's, I think it's as good a product as like the women's um, Super League in football, but it's not got the biggest names in the world in it because they will go to Australia. This year's Nation Cup tournament, which was held in Nottingham, produced the first ever netball press conference in the UK. But Commonwealth teams were still shocked at the level of coverage. Unfortunately, I don't think that we will be able to see the sport playing here and getting um, vision back home. So that's unfortunate because our family and friends would love to watch and see how we're progressing through the tournament. Um, every country that plays netball and even beyond that should be able to um, watch the games and um, cheer their country team on. You know, I, I really wish that in the near future that all netball playing country and the ones that don't play that sport will be able to say to click on and find netball because it is growing, especially in my country, netball is growing really fast. And Louise wants to use our fellow Commonwealth countries' ideas. The Australian, I don't know if you know, they have an app um, called the Super Netball app. You can watch one Super League game a week if you're lucky on Sky, whereas with Super Netball you can watch every single game. So I think netball needs to do something like that in the UK. I think it's going to struggle in the next couple of years because there's no major tournament. So what would be ideal would be Sky have the Super League rights, they simulcast one, one game a week with the BBC um, and we say you know you can go and watch all the other games on Sky but you get the numbers and you get the promotion from the BBC. It, it means broadcasters working together which traditionally they probably haven't but I think that's the way forward. And we're really lucky here at the BBC that, you know, we have women's groups or we have, you know, loads of groups of people who are really fighting hard. One of the biggest issues for, for me personally is just the rolling their eyes when I'm like, oh, netball. It just, oh, it just reminds me of girls playing on the playground at school. I was like, have you actually watched it? Have you watched a professional game of netball? Because I can guarantee you wouldn't say that afterwards. We have quite dramatically improved the um, netball coverage. Like, for instance, last season was the first time I had a shift, a one, one shift a week dedicated to writing netball. So that was Super League, that was interviewing players. That, that was a really good thing. And then, obviously, luckily, the World Cup came along and that was international standard netball, which is incredible. And you had all the best players in the Northwest. So I really do think we utilised that. I'd hope for netball it will keep growing. The big part is, you know, not only have we seen the media coverage grow, but we've seen the fan base grow, and that's gone hand in hand. Um, crowds are improving, the, the actual exhibition of the games now are so much better, the venues are becoming better. Um, just everything from the kit all the way through to the playing, and, and obviously the level on the court as well. I want netball to be on um, network TV regularly. The Super League needs to turn professional, it's only probably semi-pro at the moment. I think it will come and it is coming, but it's going to take time. It all depends when netball is in the public consciousness. Uh, we're under no illusions that it's ever going to be as popular as football. But the fact that England got to where they did in the last two years without a professional domestic league says a lot about the quality of the programme, the quality of the players. The BBC and other media organisations are realising that you have to bring in people who want to change from the bottom. I think once that starts to happen you'll see a massive influx and change again because it will be a realistic career path for, for girls to play. We're doing a lot better at changing those stereotypes with this girl can and you know changing the game has been amazing for netball. I think the BBC is, is doing as much as it can. You can always you can always do more but You've got to give it exposure so that it gets more money so it can improve. And you know, it has to be a two-way thing because I know behind the scenes, working for Lights of Sky, for BBC, for Telegraph, they're all trying to push this out there. And I do think if you push for stuff, it will change. It's about kind of grassroots netball and trying to get more people involved in it. And so if we want more, more women's sport on there, we have to support what's already going on and then push on for more and more and more, which is coming. And the, the whole attitude in the media and the whole attitude towards women's sport is changing.